Good evening and welcome to the Washington Ballet's post-show talkback for the celebration of the next part of our 2021 season. I'm Patrick Muhlenschulter, the Managing Director of the Washington Ballet. It's now coming on one year since everyone's lives were so historically and terribly disrupted by the pandemic. Our theatres and classrooms had to be closed to audiences and students. And in that time, the Washington Ballet, under the extraordinary leadership of our artistic director, Julie Kent, has refused to give up. Through grit and determination and a fundamental desire to create great and important art and teaching, we sought new ways to express our art form like that which you have seen tonight. None of that would have been possible without the support and love you, our audience members and supporters, have shown the Washington Ballet. So it's with a profound sense of honor that on behalf of the artists, the teachers, the staff, that I extend a very special sentiment of gratitude and thanks to our incredibly dedicated and brilliant board of directors, our production underwriters, the artistic directors council members, all the dancer sponsors, our new and growing board of ambassadors, the Balletamain Society and Ballet Corps supporters, the members of the Women's Committee and Jeté Society, the subscribers and viewers, and our institutional partners in government, foundations, and corporations. Tonight's success is your success. You have made great art come alive in the city of Washington, D.C., and across the world tonight. Thank you. Hopefully by now you will have all watched our two, our Create in Place ballets on Marquee TV. And over the next half an hour, we're going to unpack what you've just seen. During our discussion, if you would like to make a comment or ask a question, you can do so in the YouTube field, uh, sorry, in the YouTube comments field under the video stream, if you're watching on a laptop or a computer. I'd like now to go over to the incomparable artistic director of the Ballet of the Nation's Capital, Julie Kent. Good evening, Julie. Good evening, Patrick. Hello, everyone. So, so excited to join you, just imagining us all in the after a performance and gathering together with all the excitement. And so we're doing it in our homes, but just so, so happy to be connected in this way. Congratulations, Julie. Tell us about what it took to get here tonight. Well, I, you know, I was thinking today about how many opening nights I've been so privileged to experience in my lifetime and in my long career and and without exception every opening night is a testament to the months and months and sometimes years of effort of so many people and i think tonight is an example of all of that plus us as a global community experiencing this health crisis and so what it takes to accomplish anything under this pandemic has just been extraordinary and i am i could not be more proud of every single person that has made this possible artistically in production and our sponsors, our generous supporters, our administrative staff, fac faculty, family, the whole Washington Valley community that believes in what we are trying to accomplish and ensure and in ensuring that we make it to the other side and uh, strive to thrive as, as you have said. So, um, in, in looking back on all the opening nights, I, I think tonight will always, you know, forever in my heart, be an exceptionally special one. That sense of pride is so palpable. Thank you for that, Julie. You know, we're so excited because tonight we're going to be joined by three other guests. And um, let's bring them into uh, the studio not right now. 
First of all, we've got Wes Colwell of the videography and film studio called Studio Box. Hi, Wes. Um, we've also got Helga Paris Morales, TWB studio company member and the choreographer of Womb of Heaven tonight. And we've also got TWB company dancer and choreographer Andelian Lovu, who's worked something human everyone saw tonight. Hi, guys. Hey, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Hello. Everyone, Wes Cheers. is our artistic partner. <laughs> Cheers. Congrats. Um, Wes is our artistic partner and videographer for the pieces we saw tonight. But he first collaborated with uh, the Washington Ballet uh, on the magic of last year's virtual gala and has been instrumental in creating the extraordinary output that everyone's seen in our Create in Place series. Wes, what's it like working with a choreographer and what have you learned working with them? Oh, that's a big question. Uh, it's been just an honor to work with Washington Ballet and all the choreographers from the last uh, you know, six months and seven months and even back to the gala. Um, you know, as I was mentioning earlier to you guys in a side conversation, my background is actually like theater. So I've been in video and film production for 20 years. So to be able to go back to those roots and start to look at uh, you know, a 2D plane from a, a live theater perspective is just an exciting opportunity. Uh, but what I found, I was a bit rusty, to be honest with you. So it's been really wonderful to work with choreographers who are well versed in the stage and their passion is a live stage and kind of bridging the gap in terms of how we communicate and really kind of creating our own artistic language that bridges the gap from live performance to virtual performance, you know, with the amazing pivot that the Washington Ballet has done. So for me, it was an amazing experience. I learned a lot in terms of just choreography artistry and then really working with individuals to understand how to get their vision, which normally would be on a, a stage or live piece of theater to a virtual experience for all the viewers at home. So it's just been a wonderful, fantastic experience. Everything from the gala uh, to creating place as well. It's been an honor to do it. Wes, would you think it's true to say that we've created a third art form here? Something of a videographer, something of a choreographer, and now there's something in the middle? Absolutely. I mean, as devastating as, you know, the pandemic has been, it's forced, uh, you know, theater houses across the world to kind of re uh, imagine what it is to reach audiences. And I think you guys have done a really wonderful job of doing that and incorporating the artistry with the logistics, with the production management, bringing that all together in a kind of a new space. I mean, we were shooting things in parking lots with, with stage built in, in, in 12 hours. In national in cathedrals. Rain. Uh, you know, so it's been really fascinating watching uh, just how your experts in theater have, have kind of made that leap and said, okay, we can do this. How do we capture it? And letting us come in and holding and, and taking the baton to create that, that next step in terms of the visual representation for the audiences. It's been amazing. Mm, wonderful. I just wanted to, to add to that, uh, Patrick, that uh, years ago, I had the opportunity to work with Rick Burns, who, with his brother Ken Burns, you know, had extraordinary career in documentary filmmaking. And they were, and Rick was making a, a documentary on American Ballet Theater's 75th anniversary. And at the own opening night party, in his remarks at Lincoln Center, he he made sure to tell the audience um, there is nothing like what happens when the curtain rises. The magic of a live performance and the ephemeral nature of, this, of its existence. If you're not there to watch it and experience it, um, it's gone. It just lives in our memories and in our hearts and in our bodies in a, in a very um, specific visceral way. So as soon as you capture it on film, it's no longer the other art form. It is really dance on a film. And that's also beautiful. And in this time, that is what is sustaining us because we can't, we can't have that instant, immediate uh, experience, but we can still have uh, an audience and we can still sh share our creativity and our beauty and our physicality and our imagination and everything that we want to say as artists. And so I'm just, thank you for bringing that, uh, exactly that point of view into the conversation. And to think back on that, exactly right. You know, when you're sitting in a live theater, it's one of my favorite things. I, I miss the live theater desperately, even as a producer of, of video and film. 
But, you know, as a spectator, you get to choose this amazing tapestry of what you're looking at. You're seeing this, this wide range of performances and beauty and art and connection, and you're choosing and selecting. And as the producer and the, and the, uh, the director of the camera, we're working with the choreographers to make those choices for the audience. And that's something that's really engaging for the choreographers, for the producer director, but also for the viewers at home that we are kind of, you know, hand holding saying, this is what we'd be looking at in the room if we were doing, doing this live. Here's our experience to share with you. And that's like you said, it's created this new language for us to share with people. Yeah. Julie, once we get back into the theatres, and boy, isn't that going to be a great day, do you see us uh, doing more sort of things with videographers and on the digital platforms? Absolutely. I think, I mean, the, the reach that Marquee TV has provided for us as a company, both mm. nationally and internationally, um, is is so impressive and important, but also to the point of how it is also expanding the artistic toolbox of our um, choreographers and our dancers and how we are directing, um, allowing a, a, a deeper layer of intimacy into the performance by the camera's ability to zoom in and zoom out. Yeah. Um, it's That's something that um, I think Previously was always an interest of our field, but now it's sort of mandatory because of what we've all experienced. So yeah, well let's let's take a look at at what that deeper layer of intimacy actually looks like because obviously um, um, we see our performers quite close together. But Wes, I want to set up a dialogue with you and Helga um, where um, you're literally working quite closely together to the point where I believe you even are breathing in sync with each other. Um, uh, what sort of um, questions would you have for Helga in terms of exploring and unpacking that intimacy? Uh, absolutely. You know, it was a joy to kind of start this conversation. I think you were still in Puerto Rico when we started this conversation. So it really was a virtual rehearsal process just yeah. from my perspective. You know, as a producer, I'm usually able to get into the room, look at the the, the piece of, of art or work, you know, figure out how we're going to shoot this. And we were sharing these ideas really early on. And so Elga, you know, how was that for you in the beginning to kind of figure out how we're going to make this leap, not only from being in Puerto Rico, not being able to have the rehearsal time, but then having to translate that uh, you know, with me and, and doing this on, on you know, a virtual experience for viewers. How was that for you? It was, wow, that's a loaded question. <laughs> the, the reality is that it was a lot of moving parts. It was like a huge puzzle piece that you had to essentially conceptualize because I feel like when you look at a film, it's not just what you're seeing. There's so, so, so much that goes behind that. And then adding the element of choreography and having to... Uh, translate that to dancers and communication and and working with dancers that essentially may, may not have done certain movements before, you know, um, you're essentially inventing something that hasn't been done before or that is very new. And so it was so special, honestly. It was honestly a mess at first. It's like an explosion of ideas that you have and that have to day by day you stitch them together and and you have like this amazing fabric essentially that's how I, that's how I see it yeah and it was such a special experience for me as well as I was saying you know once you're on these these non-traditional sets whether it's a parking lot or a public park or an institute of you know an architect uh, that was you know, in its heyday years ago you're finding this this interaction with the dancers and the carvers that's just this organic movement where you find yourself actually, you know, carrying the gimbal, dancing along with the dancers, you know, moving with the dancers, breathing with the dancers. And you're finding that these pieces start to kind of breathe together on both sides behind the camera and in front of the camera, which is an experience I really had never had before. Yeah. So for me, I just thank you. Your talent was amazing. And just kind of thank finding you. that sync together on sites was just a really special, special experience. Honestly, working with you was incredible, um, especially since you have the theater experience. I agree with all of you. Live theater is so special. It's the reason why we're all here. And one of the things that I find is so beautiful about live theater is the fact that you can literally feel the energy 
of everyone that's performing because they're they're exerting their energy out onto the audience and that's such a beautiful thing that when when you put it in a lens is lost there's a, literally a lens there that's blocking that from getting to you and so the beauty about putting dance on film and trying to figure that out as as a creative is essentially like what moments can i capture that are going to be like that a uh, moment for the audience, those like intimate little moments that if you were, you know, sitting in the balcony of a theater, maybe you may not have captured, but now you have this luxury of, of, of things you can work with. Yeah, yeah. No, said in the beginning, it's access, right? We're giving this luxury of access for the viewer, these special moments that, you know, maybe if you're in the front row, you might catch, you might miss in the balcony. So you're giving this kind of uh, ec equitable access to these special moments that are coming from your, your creation that we're able to capture on video. So thank you for your Wes, work. you've worked with so many objects of your lens. Um, is there anything very particular about working with dancers and choreographers that you've noticed as you hold a lens in front of them? Keep moving. <laughs> you gotta keep moving. Uh, gotta you know, the the very first, you know, I was driving across country when we did the gala. Back, I was moving from San Diego back to DC here, and you know, we we're having these meetings on the on the phone as I was driving across country, making making my way for the gala. And when I hit the ground here, I realized that the learning curve was was steep. You know, because it is it is moving fast. Dancers are here. Dancers are there. And we were doing one, we were doing a uh, choreography. She was, uh, was it Belgium over the phone doing FaceTime, uh, the national, national cathedral. So yes. it was, it was intense. My, my advice for anyone doing this is just keep the camera moving. Uh, and at the third or fourth time, once you're starting to get in sync, you get some gorgeous footage. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, well, and the Paolo about, oh, sorry, Julia. Was, was streaming in from Amsterdam. Amsterdam well, right. Chile, so had, and we're, we're working in the National Cathedral uh, um, Amphitheater. And so, I mean, it was absolutely remarkable. It was a beautiful evening and everyone was so inspired, but uh, certainly a unique experience for everyone. Dedication was, was definitely there. It was great. It was and great. the finished product, so beautiful. Let's go over to Andile. And Julie, I'd like to set up a dialogue with you and Andile, um, perhaps exploring initially the genesis of his piece, but um, some of the other things that we talked about in our um, bar talk conversation earlier today. Well, first of all, Andile, I'm wearing this dress tonight in honor of you because it has all the colors of the South African flag. Oh, thank you. I can see so, that. Thank you. <laughs> this morning when we were on bar talk and discussing what we were going to wear this evening. And so I, I found this and I, so it's inspired by you and congratulations on an extraordinary pre premiere. I've had Victor and I have congratulated you so many times on opening nights as a dancer and this is just a, a great occasion to congratulate you on an opening night as a choreographer. And, um, you know, your piece is, as we spoke about earlier, just like a poem of movement and color and dynamism. And we couldn't be uh, more inspired by it. And so just would love to hear um, how the genesis of the piece came, whether it was the poem or the music or, the art or the color or the space or um, how when you uh, go from uh, a phone call, when I called you and said, Andile, are you interested in this opportunity? Um, how do you go from this uh, opportunity to realizing a full idea? Well, thank you. Um, I mean, so great. It's been a it's been a great night. It's been a a long day. You know, everybody's talking to me, FaceTiming me, congratulating me, and all these things. So, uh, it's been a day, but I've really enjoyed watching my piece as well as Helga's piece, and just seeing how Washington Ballet is striving for new ways of doing things and new forms of movement, and and just the spirit is different and we have to push on this way. But yes, uh, the inception of the piece actually, from the moment you called me, I remember I said, um, I accept and give me about a week and I'll, uh, I'll get back to you what I would like to call it or what I would like to do with, with all this information. You just 
gave to me and literally I went home. I didn't think about it. <laughs> I took that, I, I dropped the phone and then I just went home and I, I slept on it. I said, okay, I'll just, I'll just uh, not think too much. I'll just go to bed and see how I start tomorrow. And so the next day it was all a plan. So I started with the time that I had, right? I had nearly to, to create the whole thing. I had three weeks literally. And then the fourth week I was actually supposed to uh, film it. And so I said, I've got three weeks. How do you make this all happen in three weeks? Uh, some people create pieces within three months and four months. So um, I not think, here. Yeah, I, I know. I mean, no, luck, no such luxury here. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. That's true. And also, you know, that that, that experience also comes. I, I've experienced it here at the Washington Ballet where we have to literally create something in two days and put it up and make it look like we've been rehearsing for five years. <laughs> but um, from then, that's when I started uh, allocating my time really well, where I said, what are the camera angles that I need? What are the visuals that I need? Uh, before I even started with choreography, I just went with, I see, a, I see a camera. If I'm holding a camera and somebody else is holding it, what would I do with it? What would I do with it? Do I want to see a face? Do I see a foot? Do I want to see an arm? Do I want to see a whole body moving around or not? And so from there, that's when I started creating movement uh, based on how the lens will work and how the lens will move and how it would track me when I'm dancing. So I can't over choreograph or just choreograph a dance and, and then realize on filming day that it's, it's not gonna work. <laughs> and so um, I tried to eliminate all of that stress for myself. And then um, I moved on to trying to construct what the plan was the plan was is this are you trying to you, you you've been through the pandemic for so long so are you trying to be honest or are you trying to create a show what do you want to do and i had to ask myself i said i want to be honest i want to be honest what do i what, what what do i feel right now what do i need i need color in my life i need i need movement it doesn't matter what type of movement i need happy faces i need uh, um, expression. Uh, I need music that will encompass that, music that will share that uh, uh, and marry that together. And so I started dancing around and creating movements and then I started asking dancers to, uh, to come in for uh, where we scheduled and then asked dancers to come in for the, the, the Zoom because I choreographed the whole thing on Zoom before I even stepped into the studio. I made sure that I had a timeline Within a week and a half, I had to create the uh, nearly the whole piece, especially the skeleton of the piece, on Zoom. So when I get to the studio, I then, I then try to, you know, put some more clothes on it and see how the mannequin looks at the end. And so, um, and also at that time, I, I knew the dancers that I was working with, so I started having conversations with the dancers. I started really treating them the way I wanted the piece to look, where it was something human. So that way I wanted to come from a very honest place and say, how do you feel today? Are you sore today? I think, I think you just did that so admirably, Andile. Thank you so much. Ah, thank and, you. and I think um, our uh, bar talk with you yeah. and Natalie Rouland is, um, and Nadia is on our YouTube channel. And there's a very interesting conversation for anyone who would like to view that discussion um, on our YouTube channel, and um, I'm sure Andy Lay would be more than thrilled to continue exploring that with other people um, at, in, over the coming months. I'd now like to uh, turn our focus to Helga, and Helga, your piece uh, utilised a very interesting artistic asset that TWB had, which was an artwork by the acclaimed colour field artist Sam Gilliam a very large scale work called Journey Home that he created for the Washington Ballet as part of the 2002 ballet called Sweet Honey Project. Uh, Helga, what inspired you to unify this piece with your choreography and your piece tonight? Well, the title of my piece is Womb of Heaven, which is an abstract way in my, how I feel to basically label earth you know and so what I loved about this art piece is that it's this abstract uh perspective of nature um and it looks 
like a sunrise almost. And so what I loved about it is that um, I could use it in, in as a time spot in my piece to basically show this essence of escapism. Um, the essence of Womb of Heaven is the, is basically an existential crisis that I'm having in my twenties. <laughs> because when, you know, I personally as a person am trying to grow so much as a dancer, as an artist, as an athlete. And so when you are hit with something as a global pandemic and you you really don't know what's gonna happen with your future, um, it's really terrifying. And to be given an opportunity to, to choreograph something so magnificent, um, really put things into perspective as to I'm absolutely, I have to create something that's true to me and that's honest um, because that's all I have essentially. Um, and so I, I do a lot of reading and this incredible book called Sapiens by Noah Yuwahari just blew my mind one day because it's just the, it's an anthropology book. It's a science book about human evolution. I happen but, to be reading it right now and I <laughs> highly recommend it. It's amazing, but it, I mean. A little when, grim actually, but yes. <laughs> it's, right, but but when you read something like that and, and you as an artist, you have your own personal past and your own your own experience with with what this means or or with what is life what is our 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 creation like what is our light you know um i started to think of okay we can i can we can express this this these essences of humanity essentially um mm -hmm. and so womb of heaven is basically that it's this timepiece of human evolution and life on earth and an abstract way to relate to it if there's one thing about that book which I'd note is that it really doesn't invite a great discussion of the role of an artist in in the human race. And I think um, after reading the book and one's left quite jaded, uh, the role of the artist and what you and Andile have achieved tonight uh, really does just restore uh, such great faith in humanity. And um, thank you both so much for sharing your beautiful art with everyone tonight and in such beautiful colors. And it was on those colors um, that um, Andile and Nadia had spoken about with their costumes earlier today in Bar Talk. But uh, Helga, your costumes uh, had been designed uh, by Nicholas Cowden, who's a member of our studio company. Um, tell us about the collaboration with Nicholas on that. Nicholas is one of my best friends. I love him so much. And the two of us have always been so interested in fashion. And he came over to my house one day. I asked him, um, he's had so much experience in costume design and, and doing things really for his own fun that I have had the honor to see as a friend. So I knew that I wanted his help in creating this. And it, he just blew my mind when he ended up designing and actually making a lot of those costumes. And so, we wanted to create something that had the textures of, of nature, essentially, that felt like nature. So that when you were putting the dress on, you just felt like you were a part of, you know, the environment. And so he did a lot of research and he looked at so many books of um, different tribal wear from so many like parts of the world in many time spots. And we saw some designs that just worked so beautifully in like the color palettes and it was lovely. Very nice. And for those of um, our viewers who have access to social media, Instagram and Facebook, you can see, and obviously our website and also YouTube, you can see some interesting interviews with Nicholas about uh, his work with the Washington Ballet. I think we're going to have to wrap it up now, but I'd like to ask Julie, um, Julie, what can we hope to see in the near future that builds on the artistic success of what we've seen tonight? Well, um, before we wrap it up, Patrick, I would love to invite Nadia to come and, and join us. Ah, on Nadia's around, <laughs> Let, yes. Because um, I think the, the you know, the, the role that she played as not only a, a muse artistically, but also her performance tonight, I would just love to recognize her. Hi, Nadia, welcome, <laughs> lovely to see you. And that hat, woo! 
<laughs> yes, beautiful. I mean, as you said earlier, Patrick, it's so, uh, I mean, Natalie said this morning, it, to see um, our dancers or anyone you care about together in this, in this time of isolation, it just brings such comfort to see, um, to see the community. And, and this whole effort has been a reflection of the community of the Washington Ballet and, and everybody's talent and conviction and determination and effort that's gone to realizing it. So thank you for joining us. And you know, what is next? We have three more world premieres scheduled for uh, this season. And as we navigate uh, the pandemic and we are able to return to the studios safely and uh, under the ordinances of the city, then we will do yeah. so. Um, How are the dancers feeling, Julie, about that? Well, you know, the, the isolation has limited my conversation, my direct contact, but you know, I am and will always be a dancer. And so I know what it feels like not to be able to dance. And it's so hard. It's so, it's like holding your breath, right? And um, what you get your oxygen from is all the people that um, are helping you and and know and are are giving you that reassurance that you will be able to breathe again, right? At some point, and that's that's what we are now, and and um, what I I will make sure <laughs> that all of these dancers have the opportunity to take full deep luxurious gulps of breath and and that Elga and Andilia and, and Andile and Nardia and all the dancers of Washington Ballet with your support and all the community of the Washington Ballet that that it will be possible because it, what they're capable of um, is extraordinary and and impacts the entire human experience so and I've said it before, Julie, and I'll say it again now, uh, just as we wrap up, it's um, thanks to your incredible artistic leadership, leadership of an organization, leadership of a group of artists that has kept us together alongside um, and supported by our donors and our viewers. And uh, there's this extraordinary achievement coming um, through as a family. Um, I'd like to thank everybody on the call or the, um, the show tonight for joining us and for your contributions. And um, uh, we'll be sharing more of what we're up to in the coming uh, weeks and months. And just again, thank you for all your support, all your love, and for watching us tonight. And with that, good evening. Thanks, everyone. Congratulations. Thank Congratulations. You. Congrats, everyone. Thank you. Yay! <laughs> so proud. <laughs>